Hello friends, it's Angelina and Dima here from Walking Nature World. In this video, we'd like to share our personal experience of camping in the wild and campgrounds. We will discuss potential issues and challenges with camping, places it's best to avoid and tips on navigating these situations. We have been hiking and camping for over 6 years now and we know from our own experience how hard it can be to start doing wild camping. There are many misconceptions, fears and simply controversial information on the topic. So this video will definitely be helpful for all of you just starting out and some more experienced hikers may join the discussion too. Let's begin! First, let's talk about wilderness camping, a topic that often sparks debate. Some believe you can set up a camp anywhere, but that's not entirely true. We've personally came across inspectors patrolling trails on lightweight motorcycles, especially during our Tour de Mont Blanc hike through Italy, where we crossed several borders. One day while trekking, we encountered a person in uniform on a motorcycle designed for off-road use. It was getting late, and after a chilling day of hiking, we were tired and struggling to find a suitable camping spot. At the end of the day, we were exhausted, and that part, the terrain didn't offer many tent-friendly areas, often being too exposed. This individual passed us, eyeing our backpacks, and we guessed he might have been a forest ranger. Given that this hike is very popular and sees a lot of traffic, many people want to camp along the way without staying in the hostels. On the other hand, on the French side of this trail, there aren't such strict prohibitions. There are designated spots for wild camping, and you don't need to worry about someone's coming to check on you at night. However, on the Italian side, we occasionally encountered printed warnings against wild camping. But since our plan was to hike at our own pace and camp in our tent, it didn't quite align. And so we decided to camp in the wild anyway, taking those risks. That evening, after realizing the seriousness of the situation and the potential trouble we could get into, we decided to move as far away from the path as possible. In the end, we found a small flat spot up the hill, hidden from the trail and significantly higher. We were very tired that night and it served as a valuable lesson for us. All the following nights we spent in Italy, we either stayed in campgrounds or looked for very secluded spots, carefully choosing the terrain. And just let us tell you that it wasn't easy. So you should always be mindful of each country's laws and regulations. Sometimes even the regions or provinces of one country can have different rules. While you may not have any problems with tent camping in one country, it doesn't mean that the neighboring country is the same and it can potentially lead to unpleasant situations due to the ignorance of local rules. If you find yourself with no other choice but to camp where it's prohibited, follow these rules of stealth camping as much as possible. Don't use a flashlight and only use the light inside the tent when absolutely necessary. Also refrain from making loud noises and under no circumstances start a fire. Nowadays there are many safer alternatives for cooking and besides, they are much more convenient than a risky fire made of sticks, branches and cones. It's hard to control sudden gusts of wind that might spread your fire across the dry forest floor. Plus, you'll need a huge amount of water to put out the fire if there is no river or water source nearby. A bit of a safer option can be a portable wood stove. But we've had experience with those and we still didn't like the fact that after using one, your pots turn black and are impossible to clean. And everything, including your hands, ends up smelling of smoke. And of course, it's not all that safe either. The next rule is to try to leave such spots as early as possible. Following this rule, you can camp even in restricted areas or where it's prohibited, as an exception of course, and when you really need it. You are typically required to pitch your tent after 7 pm and pack up by 8.30 am, though these times may vary by region. France, for example, has clear signage explaining such rules ensuring that hikers are aware of the rules. Sure enough, you mustn't leave any trace behind you, taking all the trash with you. So following these simple rules, you shouldn't encounter any problems. Now let's discuss the campground stays. As it turns out, based on our personal experience, staying in campgrounds is not always as simple as we'd like it to be. Each campground may have its own set of internal rules, which may differ. Also, each campground sets their own prices, and this price can sometimes go overboard. For instance, when we tried to stay at the campground in Chamonix on our first day of Tour de Mont Blanc, they had the price 50 euros per night. And this was just a tent, two people and a small patch of land. Also, some campgrounds refused us accommodation when we arrived late at night and didn't have a reserved plot in advance. 
However, planning ahead isn't always feasible when through hiking. Sometimes you may want to stay an extra night at a beautiful spot and make an unplanned stop due to being tired or injured. You can never be sure that you'll reach a specific campground on a specific day, which is why we never book campgrounds in advance. But depending on the camping and their internal rules, they may refuse the accommodation in such cases, as it happened to us on several occasions. So you should keep it in mind too. Talking about that, we had a very unpleasant experience with camping on Camino de Santiago. On our first day, we arrived exhausted from the long bus trip, knowing there was a campground nearby. However, when we reached the reception desk, there was no one there, and we began searching for someone to assist us. Despite our efforts, we couldn't find anyone there. So we decided to set up our tent in the nearest available spot. We settled in, preparing for sleep, when a guard approached us, asking if we had a reservation and for our documents. We explained our situation, stating that we would pay in the morning and that we just needed a place to spend the night. However, the guard refused to listen and insisted that we leave the campground. With the guard looming over us, we quickly packed up and left, finding ourselves stranded in an unfamiliar city street in the dead of night. It was a dreadful experience, wandering the city trying to find any place to spend the night. Eventually, towards morning, we stumbled upon a more basic campground and pitched our tent there. But this was a highly instructive experience regarding camping stops. Be cautious and try to avoid such situations. As for a journey along the Camino de Santiago, we faced difficulties finding suitable camping spots at times. In some places, we couldn't find suitable spots for wild camping, especially in areas close to the coast, where there are many rugged hills densely overgrown with ferns. This fern growth posed additional problems for finding a suitable tent location. Therefore, we often had to deviate from the trail by a couple of kilometers to find a flatter and less overgrown area. Sometimes we simply stumbled upon fields planted with cereal crops. This was one of the least favorite places to camp for the night, but we still had to do it a couple of times. These fields are not even meant for walking. Additionally, farmers may pass through the fields and notice your pitch tent, which wouldn't be welcomed as it violates the rules. Also, the area is highly populated and sometimes we had to walk many extra kilometers until we were out of the city in the more secluded wild area. Along the Camino del Norte, we also encountered many abandoned areas with half-ruined buildings. We had to climb over low fences and spend the night in these fields due to it being impossible to find another flat and clear spot free from bushes. These were some of the critical moments for us and we understand that it was a violation of the rules. However, we only stopped for the night and left early in the morning without leaving any traces behind. Jerry 11 was another challenging trail in many aspects. We completed only a section of it and don't have a complete picture of the difficulties in camping in the middle section. Closer to the Piconetto, the terrain is very challenging, so we decided not to tackle those parts. However, in the sections we did complete, particularly those in the Catalan Pyrenees and those approaching the ocean, it was easier to find a place to camp course, not without unexpected twists. One of our camp spots was near a dam, where we also couldn't find a flat spot, there was no other option but a small open area near the dam, and we decided to stop there. During the night there was heavy thunder, and it seemed to us that the dam attracted many lightning strikes. Also it can be very dangerous to camp near steep slopes and surrounded by trees, especially if there is a storm in the forecast. Additionally, on the GR11, and it took us by surprise, we had trouble finding water sources near camp spots. So we had to carry extra water with us, adding to our discomfort. Therefore, we cannot say that camping and searching for camp spots was easy on the GR11. When we walked the Via Francigena, we encountered similar problems with camping as on GR11. There were very few water sources along the way, and absolutely all fields were either cultivated or had threatening signs at the entrance, indicating private property. Italy is very challenging in this regards. You never know what is forbidden and where, and you may unintentionally break local rules. Therefore, on this trail we faced many difficulties with camp spots. Not all campgrounds wanted to accommodate us for the night because we didn't have a reservation or simply because there was no space. In such cases we had to go far from the city to fields hidden from the road hoping that nobody would disturb us at night. In some campgrounds, our documents were taken for the night and we picked them up in the morning at the reception. 
However, everything depends heavily on the people and the internal rules of the campground. There is no guarantee that you will be allowed to stay overnight without a reservation, especially if the reception desk is already closed. These are perhaps the most fundamental points we wanted to discuss with you in this video. If you have had similar situations, please share your stories with us in the comments. We always read and respond to all your comments. Do you practice wild camping or bivouac a lot? It would be great to hear about different camping experiences, especially the more extreme or unusual ones. Thank you for being with us and we wish you great and safe camping experiences, as each of these stays is truly special and memorable. Make sure to give this video a like if you found it helpful and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, we will appreciate you joining our hiking family. And we'll see you very soon in the next video. Bye guys!